Hey everybody, welcome to Pure Mind's YouTube channel. I'm Daniel Blum, I'm the admission coordinator here at Pure Mind, and I also teach the audio fundamentals courses. So basic recording engineering and concepts about equalizers, compressors, uh, time-based plugins and stuff like that. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about compressors. Before we get into compression, I wanna talk about two general concepts that I relate a lot in audio fundamentals, okay? so. The two most important parts of my class that I teach when we're dealing with recording things and mixing and EQing and all that stuff is signal flow and gain stage. Signal flow is just where the signal goes from one side to the other side, how it goes to the mic, to a cable, to a microphone preamp, to a compressor, to an EQ, to the DAW, where it's in the DAW, do I have you know parallel effects? Am I instantiating things in line? Am I mixing in stem? Do I have a master output? Is it going to a, uh, an outboard summing mixer? Then it's going from the summing mixer, how does it get to my speakers that I'm listening to? It's really important to understand every step of the way that your signal is going, even within a compressor, because a compressor can have different things kind of going on, different paths. If you're using like a channel strip, like one of those Neve 88s that UA makes, right, you could substantiate the compressor before the EQ or after the EQ, and that's part of the signal flow. Does it go from microphone to mic pre to compressor to EQ or EQ to compressor? And that's gonna have a huge effect on how your sound's gonna translate at the end. If you're boosting the low end on a signal and then putting it into the compressor, the compressor is gonna be working on that low end. But if you're throwing the signal into the compressor and then EQing the low end post, the compressor is not gonna be working on that low end. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry, at the end of this video, make a little bit more sense. So signal flow is super important. The next massively important step in that process is gain staging. Right, because I'm going through all these different components as it goes from microphone or my computer out to the speakers. And at every single point of the line, I can increase or decrease volume. I could increase or decrease volume on specific frequency ranges. That's what an EQ does, right? I could decrease dynamic content and increase the overall dynamic content, what a compressor does. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So I want you to take those two concepts and just shove them in the back of your head, okay? The other concept that you're gonna shove in your back in your head is gonna be related directly to compressors. And that's, I want you to think of compressors as rubber bands. This is something Michael Brower talks about. A lot of articles online uh, like to reference him because he's really, really good at compression. Look him up, he's a genius. Think of when you're throwing something against a rubber band, how that rubber band's gonna affect that signal and push it back, how it's gonna prevent it from going a little bit further and maybe you know send it back at you or something like that. Keep that rubber band thought process as we're going through this. So let's get into compression, okay? Compressors affect dynamic range. So what is dynamic range? Well, we need to talk about things that are loud and things that are soft, okay? So this is a loud signal and this is a soft signal. And the range between, you know, in, in decibels, that power level of volume between the loud and the soft signal, that's my dynamic range. So why is it important to think about dynamic range? If you're mixing a vocalist and you have them in this pop song, anything like that, you know, you want that vocalist to come through as loud as possible. And if you bring them up in the mix, right, you bring those soft spots up so they can hear them over all the other synths and drums and other vocal pads that are going on, right, those loud signals are just gonna cut way through and hurt the listener's ears. So you pull the level down. And when you pull the level down, now you can't hear the soft stuff. The loud stuff is coming through fine, but then suddenly this is that, and you got like <laughs> coming all through, and you can't hear any of those lyrics anymore. And your listener is going to be like, eh, I don't, I don't. I don't like that, that sounds weird, right? But a professional is gonna sit there and be like, whoa man, you didn't apply a compressor to that? That's, that's amateur hour, man, it's amateur hour. So compressors are gonna allow us to take the loud signals, drop them down to the soft signals, and then bring the whole thing up so that I can turn up that vocal in the mix. I don't know why I did it that way, I should have done like a fader this way. Turn up that vocal in the mix, right? And then the loud and the soft is gonna sit at a really good level above all the rest of the instruments. It's not gonna be hurting my ears, and I'm gonna be able to hear all of those soft things, right? So dynamic range, that's what we're affecting. Now let's talk about some of the terms that you see on a compressor. We're gonna be talking about threshold, ratio, attack, release, knee, and then we'll be talking about the input and the output side of it. So there's a signal flow to the compressor, and that's gonna be specifically this. Input, threshold, ratio, attack, release. Knee's gonna be kind of applied to all the ratio, attack, and the release, all those types of things. And then we're gonna have the output. We're gonna skip a step and go straight to threshold and talk about some of these terms, and then we'll talk about the gain staging process. So, threshold. What is threshold? Threshold is the point at which the compressor is gonna to start to work. 
okay? So if we look on the graph on the left on my screen, yay, I made graphics for everybody. It's like a slideshow presentation. Don't you love slideshows? All right, bear with with the slideshows. If you look at the graph on the left, you'll see that we have two axes, right? We have the y-axis with output, the x-axis with input, and we have this nice turquoise line cutting straight down the middle of it, right? The bottom, that's gonna be how much signal we're throwing into the compressor, our input. Ooh, hey, who thought of that word? Hmm, that's a good one. And the y-axis, that's gonna be our output. So you can see if I throw something into the graph at, let's say, negative eight. What is negative eight? Well, we'll call it dB full scale. What is dB full scale? Well, we won't talk about that right now. We'll wait till a little bit later. Right, if I throw something in at this magical number, negative eight, right, we see that it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up, and the moment it hits this turquoise line, we're gonna make it take a 90 degree angle and head towards the y-axis. And if we look at that point where it suddenly shifts and does that 90 degree launch over to the y-axis, you'll see that it's gonna go run into negative eight, right? So there's no change in the signal right now. We have no compressor, we have no threshold kind of setup. When we set up the threshold, we can look at the graph on the right with this nice little magenta line that says threshold for everybody to clearly see what's going on. At a certain point on this graph at negative 12, if I have any signal that goes above negative 12, I'm gonna suddenly affect the signal. Not suddenly, actually, it's gonna take a little bit. Again, that rubber band concept, we'll talk about it in a little bit, right? But I'm gonna to start to affect the signal. So if I look again at that input, if I brought something in at negative eight, have it launch up towards that turquoise line, the moment it hits that turquoise line, we wanna make it take a 90 degree angle shot over to the Y axis. And we'll see now that the line's changed, it's shifted its slope, it's gonna hit the Y axis, not a negative eight anymore, but something a little bit less than that, okay? We'll talk about what specifically that is in a second, but I just wanna make sure threshold, the point where the compressor actually starts to work, okay? If we go to our next wonderful slide in our slideshow presentation, hello everybody, um, we're gonna to start to talk about how that line changes its curve. And that's gonna be our ratio, okay? And the ratio is input level versus output level, right? So we can see in this nice little light green color, woo, everything's color coded. In this nice light green color, it says ratio of four to one. Four is the input and one is the output. And what it's stating is that for every four decibels of volume above my threshold, the compressor is only gonna allow one decibel out. So four in, one out. So thus it's reducing the volume of my loudest signals in my signal, in, in my audio, okay? So if we look at the graph, right, we have our threshold set at negative 12, okay? So anything that goes above negative 12, we're gonna be reducing it by this ratio. So let's throw in a signal that's at negative eight, right? Look at that line at negative eight on the x-axis, travel it up, <laughs> hits that green line, take a 90 degree launch over to the y-axis, to the output, and we'll see it's kind of hard to tell, but it's actually gonna be outputting at a negative 11, right? Because think about it this way, negative eight is four decibels louder than negative 12. Four, that's our input side. And the ratio is saying for every four in, I'm going to only going to allow one dB out. So four in suddenly translates to one out. So while the input was negative eight, which is four above negative 12, the output's only gonna read negative 11 which is one dB louder than negative 12. And that's our ratio, input versus output, right? And we have a huge slew of ratios to work from, from technically one to one, and we can actually have negative ratios and expanders, talk about that in a different video, one to one, all the way to infinity in one, something that you know we'll deal with when we talk about limiters, right? Where nothing gets past this line, where it's like negative 12, nope, you're done, you stop, stop, please stop, please stop, okay? Right now we'll deal with simple ratios, four to one, two to one, three to one, really nice basic compression, right? We're not gonna be slamming things at like 12 to one, which some people might consider limiting. It's kind of a gray area. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But just as long as you understand threshold, the moment the compressor starts working, ratio, that change in dynamics, four in for one out. And we could always change that. We could have three in for, three, or for one out and we could have 10 in for 10 out. So let's go over to attack and release, okay? The attack is the amount of time it takes once a signal passes the threshold, right, for the compressor to reduce the signal two thirds of the way. Now, there's a couple articles online and they talk about that this isn't a standard setting, right? Some compressors do it faster, some compressors do it slower. So the attack time, it might say like, oh yes, 100 milliseconds will have your signal reduced two thirds of the way. 
But that's not true of every single compressor. Every single compressor is different. But what you need to understand, right, is that attack time is the amount of time it takes for the compressor to reduce the signal, usually around two thirds of the way. Again, some manufacturers all the way, some manufacturers a little bit less, right? So I have this negative 12 dB threshold, and I have a signal go into the threshold past that at negative eight, right? And I have this four to one ratio. All right, you guys remember in the math that we did on this? No math, it's easy math, all music sums, okay? For input, I have above the threshold, I have a four to one ratio, so I'm only gonna allow one output, negative 11. The moment the signal passes that threshold, the compressor starts working, right? It starts working on your signal. It wants to reduce it to this four to one ratio. It's four in, it wants to go, no, I'm only gonna allow one out. The attack time is the rate at which it's reducing that signal, right? So if I have an incredibly fast attack time, 0.5 milliseconds, it's gonna be like, you pass the threshold, it's gonna be like, bam, done. I've reduced your signal, no more, okay? If you have a very slow attack time, incredibly slow attack time, 442 milliseconds, right? The signal's gonna come past and it's gonna be like, I am going to reduce your signal, okay? It's the rate at which the reduction occurs. The moment the signal passes that threshold, if you have anything above a one to one ratio, two to one, three to one, four to one, so on and so forth, the compressor starts working, right? You're putting that signal into the rubber band. The moment it hits that rubber band, right, this attack time is sitting there going like, okay, I have a certain amount of distance. I'm gonna allow that signal to go and it's gonna stop that distance. Right? The attack time is saying, how fast is it gonna be able to stop that? Is it like running into concrete or is it like running into a nice pool of jello where it's floaty and just kind of like slows you down? I don't know why I said jello. Let's move on for now, okay? That's attack time. So we got threshold, when the signal passes, I'm gonna affect it. We got ratio, how much of that signal I'm gonna affect. For every four in, I'm gonna allow one out. And we have attack time. How fast is it gonna take for the compressor to reduce from one to one to four to one, okay? It's going all the way, one to one, two to one, three to one, four to one, right? And it can go, or it can go, one to one, two to one, three to one, four to one, okay? That's my attack time. So release. Release is the amount of time it takes for that compressor to pull back that signal, right? So. We have a signal that goes past the threshold, sweet. We have our threshold set up at negative 12, right? We have a signal that's jumping in at negative eight, right? That attack time is saying how fast it's gonna take to reduce that signal two thirds of the way. And again, that's not specific, that's just a general thought, right? So it's like, if you have a fast attack, whoa, down. If you got that slow attack, whoa, down, right? The moment we start to pull back on that signal, the release is gonna kick in, okay? The, really, the signal doesn't need to go lower than the threshold for the release to happen, okay? The moment the signal starts decreasing in volume, the release is gonna start to occur. And it's gonna start to occur at the, relate, at the rate that I set the release at, okay? If I have a very quick release, right, the moment the signal pulls away, the compressor's going like, okay. Right, if I have a very slow release, the compressor's gonna be like, okay. And if you look at my hand, it's kind of working like this. So let's say this is the signal coming in, and this is or this is the compressor pushing down the signal with my attack time, and this is the signal pulling up with the release time. If I have a very fast attack, right, and a slow release, what's happening is every time my arm wants to go down, whoop, it can go down really quickly. But if I have that slow release, it's like there's a weight on the other side. And so the moment that signal starts to pull away, it's like, no, it's gonna take a while for you to go. Okay, fast, no, it's gonna take a while. Okay, no, it's gonna take a while, right? And if we switch the roles, right, so the attack time is very slow, but the release is very fast, right? You can think of it as like, here's my attack, and there's gonna be something that the compressor needs to push against to get down. So again, the signal passes the threshold and the compressor's like, ooh, I will try to work on you. Release, ooh, I will try to work on you. Release. And you can set and fine tune those little things so that you, the moment the signal passes that threshold, the compressor's gonna start working. It starts, it's gonna start doing its gain reduction and adding gain back to the signal based upon the rates of these attack and release. How quickly do you want it to push back? How quickly do you want it to release from it? 